I'm on a 10 second delay here, so bear with me. All right, so I can hear online. All right, good. Thanks. All right, so let's see. We're mirrored here. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, but anyway, sorry about that delay. Oh, okay, it was only three minutes in the end. Great, awesome. Uh, I am Dr. Chris Burke. Uh, this is Computer Science 1 Honors, CSCE 155H. And I've got a head count 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, 24, exactly 24, exactly, awesome. Everybody is here, all right? So uh, the first question is, are you in the right class, all right, uh, classically? And yes, you are. Uh, this is Computer Science 1 using C and Java. That, that's something I forgot to change there. Uh, that's the honors, por that's one of the honors portion of this course, that we're actually gonna cover two programming languages in parallel at the same time. Uh, there's a, there is a little bit of give and take there, uh, so you've got a little bit more work in some areas, but a, a, a lot less work in other areas, less busy work basically, uh, but uh, some uh, more substantial work in other areas, okay? Uh, so uh, it's a highly challenging and rig rigorous course. Uh, not, if you're in here, then you, you, you're probably where you need to be because you probably got invited at some point uh, or uh, you were recruited at new student enrollment. Uh, or some other reason that you got in here because you can't just sign up for this course. Uh, but I do want to make you aware of the other offerings that the School of Computing offers for computer, you know, introductory computing. Uh, 101, 155A, and 155T are all options that use Python. Uh, they, they have various purposes for each one. Why do we have three Python courses? Uh, they serve different populations. Right? Uh, the main section for this course is 155E, that meets in the afternoon. Uh, that is the, uh, the, the, the regular version of this course that only covers C instead of C and Java. Uh, historically, the folks that come in here, are a, a substantial number already have Java, uh, which is perfectly fine, and it's perfectly fine if you don't have Java already, uh, because in my experience, even though a lot of Java in high school, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good Java. So keep that in mind. A 155N is MATLAB, that's for general engineering. Uh, and, uh, and, and they prefer their engineers to use MATLAB for some reason. Uh, 120 is for the software development minor. Uh, that uses JavaScript, but those are, uh, I just wanted to make you aware of those other courses. We offer, what is it, five, uh, six, seven different introductory courses, and that's, that, that's a truncated list, actually. Uh, so it's okay if you have prior experience. It's okay if you don't. This course will assume that you don't have any prior experience. We will start from scratch with a Hello World program maybe by the end of the day. Right? If any time you have any questions, please go ahead and raise your hand and, uh, and ask. Uh, we are online and streaming, so uh, your voice will be captured, but of course nobody's face would be captured. Your, your voice might be captured because it is way over here and I do have uh, muffling for it. So uh, I'll have to repeat the question sometimes. Hope, uh, let me j just make sure that the, yeah, good. The audio is still working. Uh, I, I mentioned that because it, it, it's not an online course, uh, but if for whatever reason, like uh, for example, I had somebody that's going to Ireland later this week uh, because they, uh, they get to be in the band and they get to go to Ireland for the, the game. Uh, and so she can w watch the live stream from Ireland or she can watch it later on because everything is recorded and, uh, and made av immediately available on YouTube right afterwards. Uh, if you do uh, choose to watch it in class or watch it somewhere else, I do pay attention to the YouTube live stream chat. And we have a, uh, a, a, live, uh, a live chat feature on Piazza. So uh, I, keep, uh, I keep track of both of those things if I gather my windows correctly. Everybody's here, so nobody's watching us online. I, I don't know, maybe if you want to pull it up on your phone or something, you can chat. Uh, or, or we just get randos, because I do have, what, 3,000 subscribers. So well, we'll get random people walking in all the time in the chat room. Don't, uh, you can ignore them. Right? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm your instructor. Uh, I've been doing this for about 12 years. 
Uh, my bio is on Canvas if you're interested. Uh, well, I like running, reading, um, uh, uh, baseball, uh, football, uh, NCAA football only, uh, hockey to an extent, but uh, th those are my interests. Uh, if, you, if you're interested, if you're a runner and interested, we do, I don't know when or if we're going to do it this semester, but we do uh, hold regular uh, run with faculty, uh, 5Ks, uh, once a month. Uh, so uh, if you're a runner and would like to come out with me and Bonita, we're usually the only ones that do, the faculty, uh, then, uh, then you're welcome to join us. We'll announce that through Bits and Bytes. Uh, otherwise, uh, your other resource here is going to be Canvas, and I've already logged in here. Hopefully you've already seen this, but here's the course information. You're in the right place at the right time. Uh, despite my posts to the, to the contrary, I'm going to have to uh, update those and check everything else too because they might have changed something else on me. Uh, you've got some resources here uh, and getting help. Uh, that's what I wanted to look at right now. Um, eventually, there will be an office hour grid published up here. Uh, you can go, uh, go to, uh, to the um, uh, Student Resource Center or you can visit with one of your LAs, in the, uh, LAs or learning assistants in Avery Lab 15. Uh, the main section actually has eight or ten LAs. This section has three LAs. You, you consider them as a pool of resources that you can go to at any time. Uh, you could also go uh, via Zoom if you're not feeling well, if you're quarantining or you just want, don't want to walk across the campus. Uh, there I am. I've got my office hours tentatively announced for Tuesdays, Thursdays by a Zoom only because I also teach on the UNO campus and uh, that's where I'll be. Uh, otherwise, we've got Ian, uh, Ali, and Koa uh, Ko, uh, for LAs for this specific section. Uh, and if you want to, you can check out the other se uh, section. It is an open course uh, and, uh, and see all the LAs that are available there as well. Right. Okay. No questions so far? So that's, that, that's how you can get help. Uh, Piazza, right? Everybody was invited to Piazza. If you haven't accepted the invite, make sure that you're accepting that invite. Uh, put up a post just to test if you want to. Uh, then you can take it down or uh, you can do it anonymously or whatever. Uh, but otherwise, if you ask a question on there, nine times out of ten, you're going to get an answer within less than 30 minutes. So, uh, But if you go to office hours, then uh, the, the, especially... Uh, on due dates, right? It's going to be extremely busy. Make sure that you're planning ahead. Working ahead is the best way to avoid that kind of stuff. Right. So what is this course about before we get into the nitty gritty kind of stuff? Uh, and to do, uh, I, I, I like to give these uh, a few of, of the quotes here. Uh, that uh, One is by Douglas Adams, uh, an author, uh, a sci-fi author. Uh, if you uh, really want to understand something, the best way to try to is to try to explain it to something else. Uh, that's true in teaching too, right? Uh, you, you absolutely know something if you are able to successfully teach it to somebody else uh, because that forces you to sort it out in your own mind. Uh, that's really the essence of programming. Uh, by the time that you've sorted out a complicated idea into little steps that even a stupid machine can deal with, you've certainly learned something about it yourself, right? And that's what programming is. Uh, you have to break a problem down into such small parts that you can tell a machine directly what to do uh, because it, machines are stupid, right? Machines don't solve problems. Computers don't solve problems. We do. Uh, we're, we're humans. We solve problems. Uh, we just program a computer to automate solutions after we've solved that problem. Right? Uh, the other one is by another uh, uh, sci-fi author, Michael Crichton. Uh, he's uh, you know, Jurassic Park, right? Uh, uh, this, this was actually for a magazine article, though. Uh, in my experience, you assert control over a computer. You show it who's boss uh, by making it do something unique. That means programming it. Uh, if you devote a couple of hours to programming a new machine, you'll feel better about it afterwards. Right? Uh, and then I've got another couple of quotes here that we'll look at in a second when we look at, a, at the syllabus. But the, those two quotes kind of encapsulate the idea of computer science at its core, uh, that, it's not, uh, that it's problem solving. Right? Uh, computers don't solve problems, we do. Uh, they only automate solutions. That's all they're good at. They're, they're, very, they're very good at crunching data very, very quickly. That's something that humans are not good at, right? Uh, humans are good at thinking, higher level, higher order thinking. We are not yet in the Star Trek world where we've got thinking computers, right? We're, we're not in the sci-fi world where we've got that yet. Uh, and probably not within our lifetimes either, uh, if, if, if ever, right? Uh, so it, uh, it, it's still important for us to understand problems break them down, solve those problems, and then we automate solutions, right? Uh, and all, not, not only that, but computer science or programming or software development, whatever, it's, 
becoming ancillary to all other disciplines. So that's probably going to be your primary discipline as a major, the computer science, computer engineering major. But uh, you cannot be any other major and hope to have a long lasting career if you don't have some of these skills that this course is going to uh, give you, right? Uh, you, there, there's no such thing as a successful, I don't know, marketing person that doesn't know basic programming uh, that can do at least an Excel file, maybe, uh, you know, maybe be a superstar and write a small Python script to automate some stuff or whatever, right? Uh, and this is encapsulated by Isaac Asimov over 60 years ago now, right? Uh, 60, uh, almost 60 years ago now. Uh, at the World's Fair, he was asked, what, is the, what does it look like in, in 2014? So it's kind of out of date here, but uh, he says that it'll have few routine jobs that cannot be done better by some machine, can not be automated. Um, the vast majority of jobs today could be automated. It's just a matter of cost, right? It's going to cost more to automate them than it is to just keep going as we are, right? Because it, uh, it represents a huge upfront investment. Uh, but uh, eventually that cost will come down to the point where, nope, that job is gone, right? You can see that right, right with uh, uh, dr automated cars, driving, right? Uh, truck driving, taxis, right? Eventually within our lifetimes, we will have uh, autonomous vehicles uh, and drivers will be, uh, driver, what's that, right? Uh, no, uh, uh, that, uh, that will be an obsolete uh, uh, you know, uh, job, right? Uh, schools will have to be oriented in this direction. All high school students will be taught the fundamentals of computer technology, become, not become proficient in binary arithmetic, and will be trained, uh, that's where he got that wrong, uh, and trained to perfection in the use of computer languages that will have developed out of those like the contemporary Fortran. So he was talking about one of the first high-level programming languages, and now 60 years later, we've got dozens and dozens and dozens right, of different programming languages. And why do we have dozens and dozens of programming languages? Because you always have somebody that says, I don't like that programming language. I'm going to fix it. Create their own programming language that fixes those things and then breaks other things. And that's why we have dozens and dozens of programming languages, right? So again, it's not really about programming. It's about problem solving. Programming is a tool that we'll be using to solve problems. It's about computational thinking, algorithms, uh, data structures, and processing data, understanding data. Uh, and that's because it's, the world is a process. We call, it, we call it a science. It's not really a science in the traditional sense, but neither is it engineering in the traditional engineering sense. It's something new, right? And even, even though it's new and uh, it's 60 years old, we're still trying to figure out what it is and tr uh, as far as taxonomy goes, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not a natural science where you can run an experiment. You can run experiments on a computer and say, well, that benchmark on that NVIDIA card is way better uh, versus that benchmark over there. That's not really a natural experiment, right? Uh, it's not really a natural science. Uh, but it is a study because it is a study of the real world. The entire world is a process. Uh, molecular changes, that's a process that it involves some computation, deterministic computation uh, or randomized computation. Um, processes in the business world. Uh, economics, engineering, all of those things can be boiled down to some sort of process. Process is computing. Right? Uh, as far as this course goes, uh, these are the high level topics. Uh, don't worry about it. It's basically, we're gonna, we're, 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 we're gonna learn some languages here and along the way, we're going to cover these fundamental topics, right? It's, uh, the course structure itself is, uh, is organized into 13 modules. Uh, roughly one per week with a couple of off weeks there, here and there because of the fall break and uh, Thanksgiving. And in the fifth week, we've got a screw up fix it week uh, that I'll talk about later. Uh, anyway, modules cover basic uh, major topics. For example, the first module is an introduction, just getting you up to speed, getting you started and getting you set up. Uh, the third module is on conditionals, right? If, else, if statements. Uh, the fourth module is on loops, right? Dot, dot, dot. You can look at them all by looking at the, uh, each one is separated into weeks. Uh, the, the blue stuff here is basically material, right? I, uh, I'll come back to each one of these lectures and post a link to the YouTube uh, recording, the live stream recording. We've got some suggested reading here from a free textbook. Uh, it's my textbook. It's free. It's, P, uh, it's just an online PDF. And then we've got some pre-prepared uh, video tutorials here if you want to work ahead or if you just need some extra practice. The green stuff is the graded stuff, right? 
great at activities. Uh, you've got a lab we'll, uh, uh, and two hacks uh, basically each week. We'll come back to but it's that's the organization. Then you've also got some suggested reading if you want to go and read some other inter interesting stuff and resources. But that's basically how it is organized. Okay. Uh, we've got some pre-prepared tutorial videos. Graded readings on Monday. That's crossed out because this is the honors section. I've eliminated that because uh, the honors section has an underlying assumption that you are uh, not more capable, but more responsible for taking your education into your own hands. Uh, and uh, I'm giving you that flexibility. With, with that flexibility comes the responsibility, right? Uh, and so it, you're, uh, it, we're not going to grade those readings. Instead, you're just expected, well, if, if you need those readings, then you should do them. Uh, if you don't need them, then that's your choice. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's your responsibility to decide how you learn. Otherwise, the lectures are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, apparently in this room. Uh, this is uh, Avery 118, uh, and uh, hopefully everything will work right up front. Uh, uh, I'll be in here like five, ten minutes early to set up. You saw me, I had to set up a lot here for OBS. Uh, and I play usually a, a song just to make sure that the audio is working. And so you might see me step out and, uh, while the song is playing until, uh, but right at 9 o'clock, 9.30, we, uh, we, we start, right? Uh, if you have to come in later, I, I don't care. Uh, just make, make sure not to make a big ruckus about it or whatever. Right. Uh, labs are on Tuesdays, and there are hack sessions on Thursdays. That times two is not you have to go to two sections on Thursday. That is, you have a hack in uh, Java, and you have a hack in C. Right. So let's talk about each one of those individually. Again, those are the videos, unfortunately, are only uh, we're, we're prepared with the idea of the main section in mind. And so all, they only cover C. Uh, but I'm, th that's OK, because I'm sure that not many people have seen C. How many people have seen C? I've done C. All right. How many people have done, done Java? Usually there's a hell of a lot more hands. OK. Python, maybe? All right. So there's some, some background already. You're all really good to go. Uh, if you have zero background, again, you're OK. All right. Don't compare yourself to everybody else. Compare yourself to yourself and your own improvement over the course of the semester or even week to week. Uh, but otherwise, each module has about four or five videos. Uh, I try to keep them down to about nine minutes each. Uh, if you want to pick and choose, right, I've got to, also got them time index. So if you're looking for something specific, you can look for that particular time index and jump to it. You can watch it at one and a half times uh, speed, uh, but uh, it, whatever, all right? Uh, it prevent, pre presents a different perspective, different exercises that I might be, than I may, might be doing in class. Uh, and it's also good as a review after lectures if you want it. Right. Uh, again, mo uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here, right there at this time, 9.30 to 10.20. And that 10.20 will be sharp uh, because I've got four classes this semester uh, and I've got to get going. Right. Um, uh, you st feel free to come up and ask questions if you have it, but uh, don't, I I'm not going to be able to stay here for like uh, uh, 10 minutes and 20 minutes. We've also got another class, I'm sure, after this coming in. Uh, they're coded in, in Markdown, which is a program. Uh, it's, it's a mark. Uh, it's a markup language. But it's called Markdown because it's a simplified uh, markup language. Uh, and all of those will be pushed out to GitHub. For example, it's uh, from your perspective in the um, lecture here. It's going to look like this. Uh, I'm going to start typing, and I'll, I'll I'll say type some code or something like that. Let's go ahead and uh, type some. All right, you said you, some of you have Python. Uh, what does Python look like? How do I print hello world in Python? Print? Yeah. There you go. And do I need semicolons in Python? Nope. You do in C and Java, right? Uh, it's a big controversy whether or not they will add that option in the future or not. But there you go. There's your first Python program. Print hello, right? If you want to print an end line character, Slash n. Is that a slash or is that a backslash? It's a backslash. How do you know? Man, sta somebody standing up and facing to the right because we all read left to right. And is he leaning forward or is he leaning back? Forward slash backslash. Right? So that'll go to the ne next line. But that's what it's going to look like. And I push it out to GitHub uh, uh, usually the same day if I can get to it. Uh, otherwise, uh, eventually. And if somebody has to remind me to do so, uh, please do so. Otherwise, the last four years of notes are there if you want to look at last four years. Right? 
Uh, limit your distractions. Take, uh, I recommend that you take notes. Uh, uh, nobody in here seems to be distracted, but there is a lot of research t saying that if you're on your phone, you're doing something else, multitasking or whatever, uh, then you're not going to be absorbing the material as much as you would if you didn't have those distractions. Right? Labs uh, are every Tuesday. Attendance is required. That's slashed out because this is the honor section. Right? Again, we are uh, assuming that you are, uh, we've never had any problem with this before in the honor section. Uh, you, uh, we're giving you the responsibility, we're giving you the flexibility to decide how you approach this course. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it is still graded. It's graded based on completion, and it is due the same day. Most of the labs are designed to be done in one hour, or one hour, 15 minutes, whatever your block is. Um, and there it's, it's 15 points. We'll talk about the, the total number of points here in a second. But uh, it's due the same day by midnight. So you're going to be writing code and maybe some other artifacts. You'll be turning it in electronically, going to the grader, seeing your grade. Right? Here's the expected output. Here's the actual output. They match. Good. You're good to go. Right? It doesn't compile. Fine. Go back. Fix it. Make sure that it compiles. Hand it in again. Do that as many times as you want until midnight that day. Right? Uh, so... Uh, there are C versions of the lab, and there are nearly identical versions in Java. You only have to do one. If you want to do C one week, Java the next week, team up with somebody and do, uh, okay, we'll do the Java this week, or uh, you do the Java and I do the C, and then we come together and, and talk about it or something like that. However you want to do it. But everybody is responsible for at least one of those labs. You're highly recommended to do, do both. Uh, but as far as a grade is concerned, you only need to do C or Java, all right? Uh, it's peer programming, so we are recommending that you get into pairs, right, and have a, a driver and a navigator. If you want to get into, if you want to work alone, that's perfectly fine. If you want to get into a group of three, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, if you want uh, the LA in the lab to uh, team, uh, you know, I, I really like working with somebody, but I don't know anybody here. Could you team me up with somebody? You know, just ask them to do so, and they will. Um, the driver is in charge of the keyboard, the navigator is in charge of the handout, and the, where are we going next, right? Uh, that's kind of the peer programming kind of model. Uh, but you're both responsible for communicating and solving the problems together. Right? Uh, it's graded on completion. Again, uh, we're not grading on style, documentation, efficiency, or anything like that. Uh, it's 15, it works, and everything matches or it don't, right? Uh, you only need to do one of C or Java needs to be completed for the honor section. The hack sessions on Thursdays. Uh, attendance is required, again, slash, right? Uh, we don't grade on attendance for the honor section. Uh, but you are highly encouraged to go, at least for the couple of, uh, first couple of weeks, in order to get in, to the into the groove of things. If, you, if after a couple of weeks you decide, well, I don't really need to go there, uh, I can do it in my dorm room. I've already got it done. I, I don't need to go. Fine. That, that, that's up to you. That's your flexibility. Right? Um, you may work in pairs, uh, but there's no other, uh, any other collaboration outside that. So no groups of three. You can work alone if you want to. That's fine as well. Uh, but if you pair up, make sure that you follow the instructions. Go into Canvas. Uh, go to People. And I'm not going to show it here because everybody's names will show up on, on YouTube and, every, and their faces as well. Uh, but you go to people, uh, people uh, and I think it's a groups, actually, and then hack pairs. And you, you just say, I want to team up with you. Great. Join hack pair five. All right. And you join hack pair five. Right. And you're, you're both now in a pair. You only need to turn in one version under the author whose name, last name comes first alphabetically. Uh, but those are not designed to be done on the same day. Uh, they're a little bit more substantial. You, could you might be able to get them done within that hour and 15 minutes, uh, but uh, likely you'll, pro you'll probably want to, to, especially you won't be able to get both of them done, I imagine. Uh, but they are basically the same thing, C and Java. You solve a problem once, all you have to do is translate it into the other at language. Right? Uh, and that's, pre that's pretty easy because... Java is a C style language already. So you're, uh, anybody who's been exposed to Java uh, and even Python to an extent, all right, it's still an imperative language. Command, 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 right? Uh, it's, 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 it all, most programming languages are like that. Uh, but you will be doing both of those. Both the C and the Java version are required. They're due the following Monday at midnight. Asterisk for some of the days that we've got, holidays and stuff like that, they'll be pushed forward. Uh, consult Canvas for all due dates. They're all in the, uh, uh, the calendar. Uh, it's graded based on style. 
documentation, design, and correctness. Heavily on correctness. Each one is worth 25 points. Correctness is worth 16 points. Uh, so the vast majority of it is, does it work and does it work correctly, right? Uh, but uh, style, documentation, and design. Style is just going to be, is everything indented nicely? Are variable names sensible? You're not using my variable 001, my variable 002, right? Don't use that kind of style. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that as we uh, demonstrate stuff. Uh, documentation means that you are documenting major functions or major functionality, or at least in the beginning programs that you have a, an author header at the top, right? Who wrote this? Why did they write, write it? Uh, what's the, pro the program's purpose, right? Uh, the rubric is in Canvas and in, hand, uh, and in the handouts. Uh, and again, both the C and the Java are required. There are also, fortunately or unfortunately, exams. There are too many exams, each worth 50 points, one midterm worth 100 points, and one final worth 150 points. These are gonna be executable exams, meaning it's not gonna be a bubble sheet, it's not gonna be, uh, it's, in fact, there's no paper in this course at all. Uh, I can't believe that there are still courses with paper out there, even non-computing courses. Uh, instead, you'll be writing programs, right? And you will be turning them in and using the exact same process as labs and hacks to get things in and graded. Um, both C and Java, see this, uh, the, the Canvas schedule, the first one is in, in the fifth week, right? So uh, more details will be uh, uh, given later as we progress, right? Don't, don't think about it right now, all right? If you do all the work, uh, you are more than preparing yourself for those exams. Right? Uh, not only that, but uh, I think that the exams account for only about 25, 30% of your grade, right? Uh, the final grade. Uh, the vast majority of your points comes from those labs and those hacks that are, uh, they, they call it, you know, for, uh, formative, I guess, the, uh, assessments where, uh, you know, you have, you have plenty of time to do it. You have this, this, this nice resource where you can hand stuff in, go back, correct it, reiterate on that as many times as you want until the due date, right? Fix things, get help. Uh, to summary, is summarize the differences between the honor section, this section, and the main section. Smaller class, there's 24 people in here. There are, in count, uh, including the uh, online section, there are 150 in the other section, 160 actually. Uh, there's no required text picker reading, but there's free recommended readings. Uh, both C and Java are covered. Right? Lab and hack attendance is not graded, your responsibility. And there are two hacks that are due each week, both the C version and the Java version. Collaboration is not mooching though. If you do choose to team up with somebody on your hacks and or labs, uh, don't undermine your own learning experience by letting that per the other person do all the work. Don't undermine somebody else's learning experience by doing all the work for them, right? For that reason, I recommend that if you've had four years of Java, right? Don't team up with somebody who's never had a, uh, written a, a line of Java in their life, life right? Or you can team up with them on the C version and then go your own separate ways for the Java version or something like that. Uh, don't uh, if, if, team up with somebody of a similar, uh, not skill level or background, but uh, you know experience level right, of, of what you've been doing. Uh, it's good to uh, collaboration is an equal effort and it is good because you get to you know uh, practice those soft skills of conflict resolution, of working together, of scheduling back and forth with another actual living person, etc. Uh, it's nice to bounce ideas off of each other. If one person gets stuck, right, I, I, everybody's been at this point where uh, there's a bug here and I cannot see it for the life of me. And then all it takes is somebody else to take a second look and, well, you forgot the semicolon there or something like that, right? That small little thing of just having somebody else's eyes on it and you go, ah, damn it, that's stupid, right? For example, just today, I, we experienced it with me, right? Uh, the, we had to call somebody all the way over here and then I just realized, well, wait a second, did somebody actually kick out the damn plug? And yeah, that was the problem, right? So uh, just getting somebody, uh, you know, I ended up solving the problem, but I still had to have that, uh, that other person come in and, say, and try a couple of things and, and that, uh, okay, that didn't work. What else didn't work, right? Uh, just uh, that, that, that process itself is what got, got me through that. And that's what'll get you through uh, difficult times as well. Branch out, don't just collaborate with your friends uh, because uh, bad collaborations can ruin friendships and good friendships can ruin collaborations. So keep that in mind. Right. Uh, the syllabus is available over here. Uh, if you go to the, uh, that, that's directly linked in Canvas. You don't have to worry about this, but uh, here's the actual syllabus. Uh, I'm, I'm on, uh, 
dark mode here, your GitHub may not necessarily look like this, uh, but let's go ahead and increase the size here. So there are some quotes there. Here's a, uh, some additional quotes for this section. Uh, the readings were really the most underrated thing ever. I've never actually read them, but I wish I did. Right? This is a former student that after taking this course. Uh, enjoyed the videos. Did not really watch them until later. You see a theme here, right? Realized that it was a mistake now. Again, a former student taking this course, right? Uh, and then uh, this is the reason I like two programming languages for this course, because it's an honors course. Uh, what does honors mean in the context of computer science? Uh, there are only two kinds of languages. Uh, the ones that people complain about and the ones that nobody uses, right? So uh, Java, C are definitely one, the ones that people use. So in other words, you will be complaining about them, right? Uh, I, I like to paraphrase Churchill. Uh, Churchill said, I was asked, what's the best for uh, his opinion on democracy? And he uh, said, democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the others. So paraphrase that, w uh, Java is the worst programming language, except for all the others. Python is the worst programming language, except for all the others. The best programming language would be that future programming language where we don't have to do it, right? Where we can tell that Star Trek computer, this is what I want, and it completely understands what we want and does it without asking any further questions, right? Uh, that doesn't exist. We're not in that world yet. Uh, but otherwise, uh, here's another quote by Eric S. Raymond. Uh, be aware that you won't reach the skill of hacker or even a merely a programmer if you only know one language. You need to learn how to think about programming problems in a general way, independent of any one language. Uh, that's problem solving. Uh, to be real, a real hacker, right, he just means good, uh, you need to have uh, gotten to the point where you can learn a new language in days by relating what the ma uh, what's in the manual uh, to what you already know. This means that you should learn several very different programming languages. And C, Java are not very, very different, uh, different but I didn't want to go too weird and different between two different programming languages. Um, and then finally, I came in, uh, this is what you should really think about uh, as a student in this course. Uh, a former pre, uh, previous student. Uh, I came into this cl class able to code by constantly having to go back to the references, needing to double check my code, right? Putting in a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, I left as a coding machine. Uh, the rate at which I did that last homework was like a whole different person. So do that, right? Compare yourself to your first, uh, when you get to the end of this course, compare yourself to the first week of this course. Three weeks from now, compare yourself to the person that you were three weeks ago. And that's, those should be your benchmarks for progress through the course, right? Uh, not how somebody else, well, somebody just left or they're not even showing up, but they're getting perfect scores, right? Because they can do it on their own or whatever. Don't, don't do that. Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself. Uh, course delivery, continuation of instruction. Those are all just administration kind of stuff. Uh, I already went over with the differences for the honor section. Uh, what you're gonna learn in this course, the schedule is on Canvas. Uh, if anybody has needs accommodations for uh, disabilities, make sure that you're going to the office of uh, for, uh, for students with uh, for students uh, services for students with disabilities, so that you can make up an accommodation and they inform me, so that you don't have to violate any privacy or anything like that. That's that's sickness is not a disability, right? Uh, if it's temporary, I'm willing to work with you on that, right? Uh, I, uh, just email me uh, uh, privately and we, we can discuss that. Uh, UNL offers unlimited uh, uh, appointments with CAPS, which is our counseling and psychological services. If you're ever feeling, uh, you know, me mental health is, uh, is suffering, uh, just go ahead and discuss it with one of those counselors, right? They, you, it's free, uh, and you have an unlimited number of visits that you can visit with them, regardless of health insurance or anything like that. Uh, so again, grading is essential uh, because we have to have some metrics, but uh, ultimately focus on the material and the grades will follow. There are starter points here. So you're, everybody here has 45 points in the grade book or will by the end of the day. Uh, and everybody has 100% in this course right now, right? You can keep it that way. Uh, there are 12 labs, each worth 15 points, like I mentioned, worth 180 points. There are 25 hacks. Uh, that doesn't seem right. It should be, uh, I'm gonna, uh, 25 times 25 is 625. They're an even number of hacks, I, that can't be right. Oh no, no, that's right, there are an odd number of hacks because the debugging hack is for C only and we don't have a hack for the, the Java version on that. Uh, but you can cut that in half and, and there are actually like 12 hacks, or sorry, 13 hacks uh, corresponding to the 13 modules. 
Uh, then we've got our exams, midterm, and final. So if you add up these points, I don't think it goes to 1,200, does it? Anybody do the math in their head a lot better, better and faster than I can? I think it does, I guess. Okay. So uh, the vast majority of your points are going to be from those hacks, uh, those weekly programming exercises that you're engaging in. Details for each one of these is here. We do have a 15th week notification policy that's referred to as dead week. Uh, and th there will be something due, due during dead week that's outlined in the syllabus here. Uh, standard letter grade uh, for, uh, uh, for, for this. It might be adjusted. I've never had to adjust it for the uh, honor section, though. Right. Uh, if you have questions about grading, uh, you'll eventually see it on code post uh, later on when we actually have something to grade. Uh, but you'll see who graded your stuff and try to get, uh, if you have questions about it, try to get it resolved with that person first. And if you can't get it resolved with them, then come up to me. Right? Otherwise, no late work accepted. Uh, the gr web grader policy, it's got to compile. It's got to run in the web grader. Otherwise, it, it ain't correct. And we can't really look at it. Right? Um, academic integrity. Uh, again, I allow collaboration, I encourage collaboration uh, for hacks, for labs, as whatever you want to do, right? Uh, just don't copy code, right? Make sure that you're not undermining your learning experience. Uh, and then for hacks, you team up with somebody, that, that's perfectly fine. Right? Uh, communications and getting help, Piazza is the best way to do that, right? I'm on there right now and it doesn't appear that anybody is posting, that's fine. That's because we're all here. Uh, but otherwise, if you, uh, also if you have uh, questions or, or eventually want to become a learning assistant, uh, then you can learn more about the learning assistant program here. Uh, otherwise, getting help, lectures, lecture videos, required reading or suggested reading, labs, hacks, Piazza, office hours, help hours, student, uh, uh, student resource center, etc. The best thing you can do, though, is to not procrastinate and getting help in the right way, right? Don't wait to the last minute to get help. Uh, you know, don't, don't let pride or fear of talking to an LA uh, get in the way. Uh, they're your near peer, they're literally, most of them are um, uh, sophomores, right? So they're only one year your senior, uh, or maybe two years your senior. They are your peers still, all right? So uh, don't be afraid to talk to them, right? Any questions so far? No? All right, so. Uh, there's some course uh, resources. Uh, I've, I've, I've posted those all on Piazza. Again, we'll start with zero knowledge. In fact, with the last 10 minutes here, I'm going to show you, uh, get into it and uh, just show you the basic Hello World program uh, that you're going to be doing in your lab and your hack this week. Uh, you can succeed. Uh, you just need to make sure uh, that you're giving yourself time to succeed. Right. So with that, let's take a look at the VS Code. Uh, so, the, the, first of all, the C side, right? So you're going to need a, a, a GitHub account if you don't have one already. Uh, and when you uh, and then when you go, uh, it, this is all in Lab One, if, if, and I've got a full walkthrough video of this as well. Uh, but I just wanted to show this to you, uh, give you the five-minute quick introduction. Um, it's free. Uh, it's free because we're mooching off of Harvard right now. Uh, they're, they're, they were kind enough to allow anybody to use their paid code spaces uh, instance. Uh, normally we would have to pay like monthly fee, uh, exorbitant monthly fees for this kind of stuff. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that everybody had uh, a free uh, IDE to work with here. While, while we're waiting for that to come up, here's the IDE that we would suggest for Java. It's Eclipse. If you want to use IntelliJ, BlueJ, whatever, whatever else is out there, fine, go ahead. Uh, but all of the lab instructions will assume a, a Eclipse, uh, and you just need to make adjustments on your own if you're going to use some, uh, some other uh, IDE. Uh, I would argue that, uh, that I would buy the argument at least that IntelliJ is probably more popular, but it costs money. Uh, now, students get it for free because they want you to pay for it eventually. They want you to get it stuck in your IntelliJ world so that later on when you graduate, you have to pay for it. Uh, Eclipse is free. Eclipse.org is where you can download it, right? Eclipse.org. And you'll also have to, uh, and you'll, uh, there's the download. Um, I would suggest that you, yeah, you're, it's just a downloader here. Uh, download, install that on your own computer. You'll also need Java, Java JDK current download. 
I think the links are in the, uh, the, the labs, and if not, then you can always look at, uh, just do a search for it here. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, I'm not our ARM. Oh, well, uh, no, I'm at X64, so. Uh, no, I'm Mac, so I would want one of these. You're, if you're on a Windows machine, you'd want one of these, just to get the installer, right? Install Java, you know, everybody might have Java installed. They don't have the Java JDK, the Java developer kit installed. That's what you need. The compiler and everything comes with this. Uh, Eclipse download here. And when you've got it up and running, it should look something like this. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a new Java project. I'll call it CSCE 155H fall 2022. When you do that, um, use the, the latest, so the latest Java that I've got installed is 16. I think there may be up to 18, I'm not sure. Go ahead and just install whatever the current version is. Next, uh, finish, don't create. There was a, uh, a, um, a feature, feature added in Java, I wanna say 12 or 13 or something like that, which is the module system. Don't worry about it, right? It'll, it'll, screw, it'll screw up the setup for everything that we're going to do. So don't create that module a Java or whatever it wanted. Uh, but there we go. Uh, I'll expand that out, and we've got a source folder. SRC is uh, short for source. I'm going to go ahead and create a package. All Java classes are organized under packages. Packages are nothing more than directories, folders, right? So I'm going to create a folder called UNL. And under that, a subfolder called CSE. I'm just going to go ahead and collect all my stuff in, in folders. Uh, do not create package inf info. Right? Finish. That's a package where I can put stuff into it. Uh, you can also put stuff in the SRC folder directly. That's called the default package. It's discouraged, but sometimes we, we require you to do it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. I'm going to call it Hello World. Uh, and I want this to be runnable, so I'm also going to click this public static void so I don't have to type it. Right? Uh, and now this has become a runnable Java program. Right? All I'm going to do is print out hello world. Right? System.out.println hello world. Semicolon at the end for the, uh, those coming from a uh, Python background. Ah, come on. There we go. And now to run it, there's this nice little play button up here. It'll run and it'll print down here, right? There's your first lab for the Java version. Now there's a little bit more to it. You're gonna take that, do some editing, going, go through the hand in process. Uh, you'll go to, uh, to CS, uh, you know, cseapps.unl.edu slash hand in. You'll log in, you'll drag and drop your files so that you can hand them in. And then you'll go over to the grader, uh, H grade. And uh, same login here. Nope, that's not right. There we go. All right. So I want to gra uh, I want to uh, grade my first Java lab here. Grade me. Right. I already handed it in. Right. There's the expected output. There's the program output. It says hello world. Right. I should have printed out my name and my major, whatever the direction said. Uh, but of course, the expected output here is whatever your names are, right? Because uh, we can't predict that, right? Uh, other things will have uh, output. For example, let's go with uh, the lab two here, right? Oh, okay, I, sorry, I didn't hand it in. <laughs> uh, I don't know of anybody else that handed it in either. But uh, anyway, this is the exact same interface that we'll use to grade you, right? So if it looks good on your end, it's probably going to look good, right? Uh, the C version. Right. Then you, uh, you, we'll walk you through the setup here. It should look something like this, where you've got this nice CS1 folder over here. You've got a hacks folder, a labs folder, a uh, miscellaneous folder, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and go into miscellaneous here. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new file. New file. I'll call it hello.c or hello world.c, whatever you want. .c for the programming language, right? Uh, so include the standard input output library, because I want to do some input and output. Out, I just want to do output here. I need to include the standard library, stdlib. Right? So very, very similar to what we just did in Java, we also have a main here, int main int argc. We'll ch talk about all this later on, uh, uh, char argv. Right? 
but Maine and Maine. You're already seeing similarities between these two languages. Uh, most programming languages, to have something that's executable, you need a main because you need a main entry point. You have to start somewhere, right? And main is the starting point. On right. here, I will print something. Uh, come on, printf. So a little bit different, not system.out.print, but printf, f stands for formatted, hello world. But otherwise, double quotes, backslash n, strings, right? It's all the exact same stuff. Return zero, don't worry about that. Now it's not all, all, all automatic. I, you, you do have a play button over here. That's for debugging. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, but I'll go ahead and compile it. Hello.c. That produces this nice little file over here called a.out. That's my executable file. You can see it's even in green. It's telling me you can execute that. Let's go ahead and execute that. Dot, and then is that a forward slash or a backslash? I'm leaning forward, so it's a forward slash. a.out, hello world. I did it in eight minutes instead of 10. Right? So we just ran through 90% of two labs uh, that you're gonna be running through tomorrow in, uh, on Tuesday in your lab. Right? I did the speed run, I didn't hand it in though. Right? Any questions? No? Okay, and like I said, these, uh, all these lectures are live streamed on YouTube uh, and uh, recordings are available immediately after. I will give you a word of warning though, just like we've experienced technical details, uh, de technical difficulties today, there's no guarantee that the entire grid won't crash or YouTube will die or something like that. Uh, we'll just have to make accommodations. It's only happened like once in the last four years that I've been using OBS, so. All right, then have a great rest of your day and week. <laughs>